some of them didn't understand. So I, I record our discussion today. That will be more comprehensive, hopefully. Okay, output, 10 units, and at a price of 22. Marginal private costs are given. So marginal private cost means just marginal cost at the moment. It's a private cost. Uh, marginal external benefit is that benefit that we're talking about. You notice that this is incre decreasing as we produce more output. The benefit is not as much as we produce more. But when we produce less, the benefit is higher. And now we need to work out what the marginal social cost is. How do we do that? Now, let's go on to A first before we work it out. Assuming no government intervention, how much will the firm produce to maximize profits in this case? So there's no intervention, no taxing, nothing. It's just a free market. Firm is producing as much as it wants, and it produces the quantity that maximizes profit. And what was the rule for profit maximization in the short run? Exactly, MC equals MR, so can you pin that down? That that output level where MC equals MR? It should be eight, eight units. Why is it eight units, guys? Yeah, price is the MR here. Notice this is a straight line. Uh, this looks like um, a firm in a perfect competition, isn't it? Price is taken as, as given, so that straight line is our AR, which is also MR, which is also price. And our marginal private cost is starting at 17, so it's somewhere here, there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is private, marginal private cost. Right, um, marginal external benefits given, so let's go to B now. Fill in the column for marginal social cost, please. Now it's MSC, not MC anymore. So we take into account the external benefit or costs in this case, externality. So we will internalize it in some way when we calculate the marginal social cost. So what's the marginal social cost equal to here? It's the marginal cost plus minus the externality. In this case, Will the externality be adding to the cost or reducing it? Reducing it because it's a benefit. Marginal, this is a marginal external benefit. So if it reduces, then then twelve. 13? 15. Where are you reading that? 15? So that's what? Minus? 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 And that is 15, isn't it? Um, 16? 18? 26. So these are my marginal social costs now. Do I have the graph here? Now, what do we do now? One thing, this is, yeah, fine. What do we do now? Marginal social cost? No. No, we go to C now. <laughs> we, we done it. I thought there's a second part of it as well myself. When, when I read it, it was just there. So, so see now, what is the socially optimum level of output now? Let's draw it. Let's draw it. It's, it's probably easier if you draw it, yeah? What happens is that this shifts downward by this. Um, this is usually approaching. So this is our marginal. Now this is marginal social cost. This was marginal. So socially optimal unit initially was eight units here. Now it is? Nine. Nine, thank you. So that's because 22 equals 22. Marginal social cost equals price, which is also marginal social benefit. Right, so next. 
what subsidy per unit would the government have to pay the pay the firm to encourage it to produce this level of output? What's the subsidy to keep the uh, to keep the production at nine units to encourage him to do that? Hmm? Two pounds. That's correct. Yeah. You internalize it by providing subsidy so that the quantities are higher. Keep the quantity higher because it's beneficial for the society. By subsidizing means you're encouraging to produce more. If that is external cost, you take away, oh, sorry, the, um, you impose tax, impose tax by the amount of the cost, equal to the amount of the cost, I should say. What would it cost the government now, in total, in terms of subsidies? How many units are we producing? Nine. Nine. So each one is costing two pounds to the gov for the government, isn't it? Because subsidy comes from government, taxpayers' money. So nine. So that's 18 then, yeah? Mm. So that will be uh, nine units at the socially optimal point. And each, for each unit, the government pays two pounds subsidy, which makes the total, uh, total expenditure for the government 18. F now. If new farming technology doubled the benefit of the waste to the farmers, what would now be the socially optimum level of the firm's output? So the double the benefit of the waste. So what happens now? What do we do? Anyone? Guys? Why is this group so small usually? And the other group is packed. Yeah, they go there. But they don't get the attendance registered though, if they do so. Because the list, the attendance list only registers those who scan within their, in their, in their, uh, what do you call this? Class time. Also, it doesn't matter for them, right? Because I spoke to the admin office, the admin said the names only appear for the scanners available, you know, for registration only during the class time, their class time. So you miss that attendance if you don't attend. Especially those who are international need to be here. But local ones, they look local, by the way, <laughs> all of them in the packed group. So maybe that's why they don't pay attention, or maybe don't care at all. Maybe we'll have to drop them an email then, because that's not fair. That takes away much of the time there because it's too many questions with too many students and uh, well, it's good for us. and it's good for you yeah, so we can spend more time less fewer questions yeah. all right are you supposed to be in the other one you're losing your tennis then. okay but in each class is so you don't you don't want to no i i come there and i change what do you Sometimes mean Ah, okay. All right, okay. But yeah, make sure that you don't get emails, warning emails. Yeah. Right, so marginal external benefit, what do we do now? It's doubled. So we double them. So types them by two, times two, mix it, 14. So the benefit is rising. We have to produce even more of that now. Yeah, all of them. Now, now what will the social cost be now? Marginal social cost up to doubling. Because we don't still know. Then the difference between them, yeah? Again, so we calculate the new marginal social cost. That is three, four, or eight, eight, ten. Ten. 13, 14, 16, 16 18, 20, 20, 4 or 5? Five. 5. Sorry. Uh, social cost? Uh, marginal private cost minus marginal external benefit, new ones. To the right, that's the difference between marginal so private cost and an external benefit after doubling it. Okay. Why did you double it? Because it says it doubled. It yeah, in the question, yeah. So external benefit doubled because of technological progress and 
that benefit needs to be taken away from the. Yeah, it did decrease. Margin, social margin cost decreased now. Right, so now what do you think the answer is to the question? Question still not answered. What output level now should we produce, given the benefits doubled? It makes sense to increase then, right? Benefits are even more. So where do you think the output level will be then? Hmm? 9 and 10, yes, it will be, because 22 is between 20 and 25, isn't it? So 22, that's marginal social cost is somewhere here, somewhere between the two. So it's 9 and 10. So answer is nine and between 9 and 10. We produce something between 9 and 10, maybe 9 and a half units, <laughs> kilograms. <laughs> yeah, so it will go like this now in the graph, new graph, yeah, for the social cost. Okay, is this cle clear? This is this is an exam type question. Nine and ten between nine and ten, yeah. Um, yeah, the the marginal social cost curve shifted to the right now because of the benefits doubling and reducing the social costs. Right. So, moving on, this is question. Is it four? Yes. Now for four, I prefer moving this to another. Window. It's a big graph. Right, so let's read this now. The following figure shows the production of fertilizer by a perfect competitive profit maximizing firm. This is perfectly more competitive. Production of the goods good leads to pollution of the environment. Now it's the opposite of what we've just done. However, okay, this pollution is an external cost to the firm. Which of the two curves, one or two, represents the marginal social cost curve? One or two? Now, we're moving to this. So which do you think is the marginal social cost curve? Everyone, look at it, please. Middle one is the uh, marginal private cost. Is it one or two? So it cannot be middle one. Why is it one? Exactly. It's because it's rising, raising the costs. Margin, it says marginal external cost. The other one was marginal external benefit. That's why we moved to the right, shifted to the right. The number two would be the case. Yeah. Remember, I, I specifically uh, did this look at this, I shifted it here. You see the curve is shifting to the right here because marginal co social cost is being reduced now to the right now, MC, MC, MSC1 and MSC2. But here, the question says it's a cost, it's a pollution. So it adds to the existing costs. When it does so, it should increase the cost and that it can happen only when there is a shift to the left. And we need to produce less of this thing. Right. Okay, let's move on to the next question if you don't have a question. What output will the firm produce if it takes no account of the pollution? Take a look. Which one? Q1, Q2, Q3, which one? Why is it Q2? Yes, it's MC equals D and it ignores social costs. This is the answer. Hmm? Demand. So when there is no common pollution, marginal cost increases demand. Why is that the case? Why is it so? Yeah. I should ask you guys. Why is it? Marg why is the demand is equal to AR? Why is it equal to then MR? And it's also equal to price. That was the question, right? Yeah. yeah why is it, guys? Why is it? I told this. I think I mentioned this in the first question. I no, no. Look at this. You see, it was the case I drew here as well. The same thing, but and then I mentioned this is because of such our oh, perfect competition. It's perfect competition, and individual firms take the price as given. At any output level, at any output level here, the price will stay the same. Yeah, that's why. 
Here it is, that's why it is. 22. Okay, let's go back and see what the question was. What output will the firm produce if it takes no account of... So that's Q2. Yeah. Now, C. What is the level of the marginal external cost at this output? Going back. What do you think at this output? What's the level? Is it C1, C2, C3, C4, C5? Which one? C5? Why is it C5? Oh, this is plus now. Yeah, you're adding it, don't you? You answered yeah, that question. So that increases it to C2, right? It's C2. Look what it says. What's the level of marginal external cost at this output? It's the difference between C2 and... Uh, let me bring it back. It's the difference between... This is the level. C2 and C3. It's shifting it, yeah? We, we just said we're adding it in the answer in two, two second question, remember? So it's this cost, C2 minus C3. Because this is now MSC, which is equal to MC plus marginal external cost. Yeah? That marginal external cost is this length here. That's how much, by how much the cost is MSC increased. That shift induced that increase, basically. Makes sense? Hope it is clear to you guys. Clear or not? Yeah. Huh? Why is it minus C2? C2 is the new MSC at Q2. Old MS, uh, old, old, Cost was uh, was there, remember? Old cost was C3, new cost is C2. The difference is the increase in the cost, which is marginal external cost. Don't know if it's clear to you guys. Did you understand what I just explained to him? The reason why this is the difference between them is because if, if the firm didn't take into account marginal external cost, their cost would be, corresponding to this quantity, would be C3. Because there's a marginal external cost, which is usually uh, something like this. Let me see. This is from the lecture. This difference here is added now because there's a marginal external cost. That external cost added to this MC. So this is the case. I'm adding it to MC. And MC shifted backwards. It's the red line now. And increase it to C3. Sorry, C2. MC. So at this quantity now, Marginal social cost is now C2, which is the new cost. New cost minus old cost gives us the external cost. Yeah, that's this this thing, MEC. Make sense now, everyone? Yes or no? Yes. That's good. You see, this is the external cost. What is the socially efficient level of output? Take a look at that. What is the socially efficient level of output? So I'm gonna go down, start another one. So what, which one is it? Q1. Is it Q1? Everyone happy with that answer? Yes, because new M MSC crosses the demand line at Q1, yep. And that means if there is an external cost, we should produce less. Originally, we produced Q2, which was more. If we are to take into account the margin external costs, we should produce less of this product. It's a demerit goods, demerit. Merit goods and demerit goods? Demerit or demerit? Merit goods are the ones that have positive external costs, benefits, so we have to produce more of them. Right, so now E. 
assume that the government imposes a tax on the pollution caused by the firm at a constant rate per unit of output, what must the size of the tax per unit be in order to persuade the firm to produce the socially efficient level of output? So what's the, what's the uh, tax on this case, uh, on this uh, output or production? How much should they uh, impose the tax? What rate of tax? Exactly. At the social output, level of output, in order to move production from Q2 to Q1, they should tax this much. So this is the range, yeah, this much. This is the difference, so say 3 minus C4. The difference between the two curves is, at this point, is this distance. Make sense? Um, they, they tax as much as um, they cost. Be co yeah, external cost. The tax should be equal to the marginal external cost. Okay. And F, assuming that this firm is the only polluter in the industry, what effect will the tax have on the market price? What do you think? Guys, speak up, please, everyone. Sorry, say it again? Decrease. Well, just you saw just that the price is increasing there. Remember, the shifting the marginal cost backwards means higher cost per unit, and that means high price. Yeah, it's I1 is the new curve, considering the tax. Tax is adding to the price, right? If government taxes uh, impose a tax on your output, then you pass it on to consumers. That will be high price. But then this is a perfectly competitive firm. What happens to the price, market price? Nothing. It doesn't affect the market price. There are millions of such companies, but it's the only one that can pollutes. So change it. He, it may change its price because of the tax, but. It will have to leave the market because no one is going to increase the price because of him or this, this single firm. Remember, market price is taken as given by individual firms in perfectly competitive case. So the question, if you read this again, if, uh, where is it? Assume, assuming that this firm is the only polluter in the industry, it's the only polluter in, this, in the industry and it is a perfectly competitive firm, uh, industry. And what effect will the tax have on the market price? Nothing, none. Yeah, this, the government is not taxing everyone. It's taxing only this polluter. And this polluter cannot affect the market price. This was the uh, condition for a perfect competition that the individual firms do not affect the market price. Yeah. Therefore, this price yeah, it looks like, they, because they cannot sell, or oh, they have to keep the price, just absorb the tax as an expense. Market price will be the same. Yeah, because it's the only firm. This is the only one firm being taxed. The rest will be selling at the given price, as it is. Oh, then the market price will have to rise because everyone is affected. Everyone is affected by the same amount. So whole market price will increase. Everyone will increase it to stay competitive. Next is this question here. Uh, now we're going into monopoly and competitive market now, not anymore perfectly competitive. Read it, please.
Clear? Can we do it now? Question A. What is the perfectly comparative price and output? Who wants to answer it? It's an easy one. How about others? What do you think? We'll, we'll wait for others. Yeah, go ahead. Q2 and P2 and others? We'll ask why in a minute. How about others? Undecided? Everyone? Everyone else is undecided? Q1 and Do you think so? Let's keep it for now. Anyone else? Let's give everyone a chance. What do you think? You, you and the guy at the back. <laughs> You're busy. Uh, sorry, am I busy? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you are very busy. Okay, A. 6A, what do you think? The answer is to 6A. 6A. Yeah, we are there, there. yeah. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the perfect... Uh, per <laughs> you, <laughs> you have a different... Uh, MC is equal to M MSC, basically margin social cost is already there so in this. Yeah, it has to be the combination com combination of P and Q here. The answer is combination of P and Q. Not yes. Give us an educated one then, <laughs> if it's yes. <laughs> okay, it's, you, you are looking at P1 and Q1, and I know you are in P1 and Q1, and almost everyone else for PQ and Q2. PQ, I mean, P, P2 and Q2. <laughs> Why is it P2 and Q2? Huh? Uh, what was the rule for profit maximization? MC equals AR. Yes, MC equals MR or AR. In this case, AR for perfectly competitive firm. Read this, it's perfectly competitive firm. That's P2 and Q2. And how about monopoly? That's the question B. Where do monopolists maximize their output? What, at what point? Why is it so? Because their margin revenue is steeper than the average revenue. And their margin revenue is crossing the uh, marginal cost at that point where Q1 and P2, P1 crosses, um, intersects or whatever you call it. That, that intersection corresponds to uh, P1 and Q1. Makes sense? Yeah, monopoly and perfect competition. They, these are two different cases, you know that. C. So who wants to answer this now before we go ahead? Brave boys and girls, quickly. What area represents consumer surplus in the perfectly competitive situation? Any brave hearts? Do you remember the concept consumer surplus? This is an exam topic, keep that in mind. Consumer surplus. This is from your first week. There was a two page long, yeah. Yes. Sorry, say it again? For B. For C. We, we've done the B already. So what areas represent consumer surplus in the perfectly competitive situation? Okay, yeah. Three, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Consumer surplus is the benefit of consumers and anything above the equilibrium price but below the demand curve, which is the AR curve, is the consumer surplus. Wait, anything? It's in this region, yeah? It's... Above? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, this, this region here. This region is the consumer surplus. One, two, three, four, five. That's because if someone wants to buy Q1 units at this price, well, but they are able to buy it at a lower price of consumer uh, equilibrium price, that difference here is their benefit. I would be happy to pay P3 for Q1 units, but equilibrium price is P2, so I pay less. The difference is my benefit, not profit. The difference is my benefit. Yeah? So, Difference between the it's the area under the uh, 
demand curve, but above the equilibrium price line is the consumer price, consumer surplus area. Okay, let's move on to the next one. It's competitive case here, right? What area represents consumer surplus after the industry has become a monopoly? So assume that the one company is now dominating by buying up all the other companies, merging with them or acquiring them. So what do you think, guys? Anyone? You're giving away the consumer surplus to producers. Oh, is it the consumer? Are we still looking at the consumers? So which one you said? And ten. Let me see. Let me see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And ten. And ten. It's because below the MC, right? Below the MC is not consumer surplus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also not everything else here. Remember, yeah. what's the price here on the, on the monopoly? What's the price? Yeah. P3. P3, right? Because that corresponds to the maximum output. That's P3. So above the P3, below the demand curve, this is the answer. I just told you the definition. Above the price, but below the... No, I thought it was P1, not P3. That's right. right, okay, yes. Then you, you, you missed a few uh, others. Uh, sorry, um, you just included a few others that aren't yeah. supposed to be there. So one and two only. Because that's above the price on the monopoly, but below the demand curve. Right, next one. What areas represent the loss in consumer surplus after the industry has become a monopoly? So what happened? Let's go back. Yeah, it's 3.5, isn't it? Because of monopoly, the price has risen. That means consumers lost initially, they had 3.45 too, but they lost it now. They only have one, two now. Their consumers, their surplus is now reduced by 3.45 being as a uh, because they are lost. Lost to the producer. Monopoly has captured them by raising the price. Although it's selling less, it's selling at a high price, means it, it's, uh, make, it's making killing. It's making a killing, yeah? <laughs> making a profit, high profits. Okay, next one, uh, F. What areas have been produced surplus in the perfectly competitive situation? So let's go back and now, huh? One, two, three, four, No, that was produced surplus. Now we're looking at, uh, sorry, consumer surplus. Now we're looking at producer surplus. Producer surplus is the area above the supply curve or MC curve, but below the equilibrium price. So it's six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight, exactly, and nine, nine on the perfect competition. Oh. Yeah, six, seven, eight, nine. This whole area is the producer surplus on the perfectly competitive firm. But you will see that on the monopoly, that's not the case. Uh, two cal three calculations. One essay out of two and ten multiple choice questions. Some of them calculations, easy calculations. You are allowed to bring calculator. So you know, producer surplus. Mm -hmm. Below equilibrium and above the demand curve. So it's a supply curve. In, in this case, it's MC curve. MC is the supply curve here. Now we're looking what F. It's no. Above, the curve. above yeah. We're looking at G now, so have a look here. You know, six, seven, eight, nine is the uh, producer surplus. Now G, uh, what area surplus producer surplus after the industry has become a monopoly? So let's go back to a clearer picture. So which one? Yeah, go ahead. Three, four, six. Seven nine. Is everyone happy with that answer? Three, four, five, six, seven. Why did you add five? It's although it's above MC, it's not actually within the range of quantity and price combination. You see, so the range is now this area and this. So the boundaries. I'm drawing the boundaries for the producer surplus. 
So all this is producer surplus now. This is not captured by anyone. And this is also not captured by anyone under monopoly. Because monopoly is producing this many quantities, not Q2. It produces Q Q1 quantity at the price of P3. So this would be the reduced consumer surplus. And this whole thing would then be produce surplus, while the one two is consumer surplus. Okay, let's move on now. Now, what areas represent the gain in producer surplus after the industry has become monopoly? So, what areas are gains in this case? Look at this highlighted area and then what it was before on the competitive conditions, the situation, and then tell me what the gain is, what the gain is here. Hmm? What are the gains? On the perfect competition, producer surplus was only six, seven, eight, nine. Now it's three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So what's the gain? Three, four is the gain. Eight is a loss. So three, four minus eight gives us the net gain. Because eight is not being captured now by them. But then the overall three, four is bigger than eight. So that's the net gain. Yeah? So they are better off by raising the price. What areas represent total dead weight loss? In this case, welfare loss under monopoly, guys. Look at that. Which areas? Which two areas here? Ah, uh, dead weight. Dead weight, welfare loss means no one is capturing them. No one benefits from them. Five and eight. Five is a loss from consumers. It's their loss. They lost it alongside three, four, but it's not captured by the producer surplus. Eight is the loss to producer, but it gained by capturing three, four more than losing. So five and eight as a result are dead weight loss. They just dead. Not. Sorry, say it again. Uh, that's because monopoly produces limited amount, which then keeps a boundary here. It cannot go out, out into five and eight. And producers is paying P3, so it cannot gain that as well. So what's left here in the society, no one is capturing is this area. This is very abstract term, so surplus. This benefit is just intangible benefit that we don't get. Yeah? Under monop perfect competition, if the price were two pounds or the P2, we would have captured them. Three, uh, sorry, five would have been captured by the consumer. Eight would have been captured by the producer, because the the combination would be Q2 and P2. That means the surplus was higher for both. So no one's now no one's benefit. That's why it's a dead weight loss. If it's perfect does this oh, there is no dead weight loss. Oh, by the way, perfect competition is very stylized and theoretical. There is no counterpart in reality. So. It's the best case scenario. We don't have any company. That's why we always say, if we can achieve a bit of competition, prices will go down and we will benefit from it. So there was always a dead white because everything is monopoly. If there's a little bit of monopoly or oligopoly, there will always be a dead weight loss, yeah. If the MR equals MC and prices are above MR, then that's usually the case. Clear, guys? These things are abstract, but do, they do make sense if you read the books and come to the lectures. <laughs> or at, participate in the lectures by asking questions. Huh? Oh, you're doing I. You missed the H only. Okay. What was the H, guys? The gain is 3 plus 4 minus 8. Because the producer lost eight but gained three and four. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I is? Or answer to I? Okay, good. So let's move on now. And uh, now this time we move. Okay, finally we move on to the uh, qualitative type questions. What is this? This one? Okay. 
Um, which one do you want to start? First one, second one, or any others? Hmm? Which one? The first one. Okay, let's do the first one. Have you read it? Is everyone familiar with this question? We can right away answer it now. So we have to match the first list individuals in the first list with the individual points in the second list. Match them. Externalities. Which of these? So look at the A now. There is an inadequate provision of street lighting because it is impossible for companies to charge all people benefiting from it. It's the case of Okay, merit good is the type of good or type of goods that are that have a large positive externality or external benefits, but we produce less of them. It's like vaccination is a merit good. NHS is a merit good. Um, you can think of any other things. Uh, having a good garden is a merit good because everyone enjoys it. Oh, walking by something. Okay, in front of your of. Huh? National defense. National defense is a merit good. Is an externality to. Oh, it's actually public good. Yeah. Okay. A. Yeah, it's a public good. Yeah, lighting, street lighting is a public good. So, no one is internalizing it. No one owns it, and no one want to own it. Okay. B. Advertising allows firms to sell people goods that they do not really want. Kind of they're related, yeah, because it's only ones. But it's also the case of ignorance. We are not thinking socially optimal because we just buy it because we're ignoring the aspects of that that are not open, uh, open for us or, or shown to us. We only see what's in the advertising and we ignore the rest and uncertainty. If, I, if advertising didn't induce me to buy my MacBook Pro, I wouldn't have bought it. So I bought it by going by the advertising. The power it has is much less than the power that I, that uh, compared to the other laptops. Uh, the, uh, I paid the fraction to get the uh, other one, but it's much faster than the Apple. So it's just sitting there. So that's advertising, it was ignorance on my side. A firm tips toxic waste into a river because it can do so at no cost to itself. What was it? What was it? I didn't hear it. Externality. Is everyone happy with it? It's a negative externality, yeah? No, no, it's, it cannot be, no. Um, you can say it's, the, the firm is ignoring the uh, negative externality here to others, but then it's not, it's actually externality. Um, D, people may not know what is in their best interest and thus may underconsume certain goods or services such as education. It's a merit good. It's a merit good. And you can say it's ignorance, but it's not necessarily. But it's the merit good. We we don't vaccinate sufficiently all of the, you know, or we don't educate to PhD level. Although it's a it's a good one, isn't it? Imagine everyone in the society is PhD, <laughs> so everyone works then hard. Doing a PhD takes four years and more hard work means then once you get the PhD, you don't want to leave and stay at home. You feel that you've done so much, so you need to work. Keep. So that will be socially optimal. And if everyone had a PhD, I think we would have less tax burden on us because the benefits wouldn't have to be paid out. Everyone would be working. Less of crime. So this is merit good. Education is a merit good. Right, so E. Firms' margin revenue is not equal to the price of the good, and do state do not equate MC and price. Under what? Yeah, it was monopoly and oligopoly, right? They do not equate their margin revenues to margin cost. Sorry, they they do not equate the price to margin revenue or margin cost because of the downward sloping demand curve. It's only positive, uh, perfect competition where 
the uh, demand curve is straight line, where AR equals MR equals price. And as such, they equate the MC to M price in the perfect competition. But here, monopoly, in this case, do not. Now, the last one. Firms produce, provide an inadequate amount of training because they are afraid that other firms will simply come along to poach them. Possibility, yeah. Mm. This is more like, uh, you know what, if you train your people, if you train your consumer uh, staff, what happens is that there's a positive externality, right? They are trained means they are able to teach others, they are able to act properly, they are able to not steal from production, so that's socially beneficial. Yeah. So it's a positive externality and it's also a merit good in a way. Understood? Clear? But we don't do much of it. Enough of it. Sorry, say it again. Where does it say? Okay, the following are problems that prevent markets. Yeah. Because it's a public uh, merit good, we don't produce much. Because we think that others will, you know, poach our trained people. We lose it, so we don't train as much. We think that, oh, this guy, okay, we need to train them, but if we train them, he may leave us, and then it costs a lot to train, so we do prevent ourselves from doing socially optimal things. But it is the case of socially optimal case, if we do. Yeah, makes sense now? Yeah, they should have trained them, but they don't. So it's an externality to others, but training on itself is, is has a positive externality, and it should be done as much as possible, as many as it. As much training as possible, but it's costly. Private costs are higher. So now, um, any questions? We've got two more questions left. I will upload the answers, and you can read. And if not, if you don't understand anything, you can knock on the door. No worries. And don't forget to touch out. No, if you haven't done it yet, then do so, please. Before you leave, touch it out.